Hello! In this video, we will consider indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule to determine the values of limits. Now, in the past, in Chapter 2, when we worked with limits or when using the limit definition of derivative, we encountered many cases where the limit initially looked like 0 over 0, which we always said meant to do more work. Now, usually that work involves some sort of algebra, whether that's simplifying after we factor or multiplying the numerator and denominator by a conjugate. But there are times that algebra is overly complex, so there are no easy ways to simplify an expression in order to evaluate the limit. So the L'Hopital's rule gives us the opportunity to evaluate the limits that we may encounter when we encounter an indeterminate form. Now, what's an indeterminate form? Well, 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, infinity minus infinity, 0 to the 0, and 1 to the infinity are all considered indeterminate forms. For any of the given expressions, there are an infinite number of, quote, answers that could result. So sometimes, for instance, any time we use the limit definition of derivative, technically we would get a 0 over a 0. And we know that the value of the derivative can take on an infinite number of, uh, of answers. So whether that be 1, 0, square root of 2, 10 to the 13th, 10 to the negative 21st, and so on. So therefore, we say that 0 over 0 is indeterminate. So what is L'Hopital's rule? Okay. Well, the statement says that suppose we have functions f and g, where f and g are differentiable on an open interval containing a, and f evaluated a and g evaluated a are both 0. Suppose we also know that g prime of x is not 0 on the interval i as long as x is not equal to a. Then L'Hopital's rule says the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches a is the same as the limit of f prime of x over g prime of x as x approaches a, provided that the limit on the right side of the equation exists. And this is an important qualification. We're going to look at an example where the limit on the right side does not exist and what we do in that situation. Now, why does L'Hopital's rule work? Well, if we consider the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches a, and we know that f of a and g of a equals 0, when x is near a, using linearization, f of x is approximately f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And g of x is approximately g of a plus g prime of a times x minus a. So therefore, I can rewrite the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x as approximately f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a all over g prime of a plus g prime of a times x minus a, and we simplify and we get f prime of a all over g prime of a. Okay. So it seems reasonable that L'Hopital's rule works, again, provided that the limit on the right side of the equation exists. Let's consider a few examples. Let's look at the limit of 1 minus the sine of theta divided by 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta as theta approaches pi over 2. Now, before we begin any such limit, we have to make sure that the form takes one of the indeterminate forms identified earlier. So if we look at 1 minus the sine of pi over 2 divided by 1 plus the cosine of 2 times pi over 2, we get 1 minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1, which is 0 divided by 0. So therefore, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So the first thing that we do is that we take the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator and then evaluate the limit of that quotient. So when you take the derivative of the numerator, we get negative cosine of theta, and then the denominator is negative 2 times the sine of 2 theta. And look, when we take the limit as theta goes to pi over 2, again we get 0 over 0, an indeterminate form. Well, what does that mean? We apply L'Hopital's rule again. So the limit of negative cosine of theta divided by the negative 2 sine of 2 theta as theta goes to pi over 2. We're going to take the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. And we get the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 of sine of theta divided by negative 4 times the cosine of 2 theta. And now if I look at both the numerator and the denominator for values of theta close to pi over 2, I'm going to get 1 divided by 4. And there's our limit. So the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 of my original expression, 1 minus sine of theta divided by 1 plus cosine of 2 theta is 1 fourth. 
So as you can see in like this example, there are times where you might need to apply L'Hopital's rule multiple times. Let's look at another example. Let's consider the limit of the natural log of x divided by the fourth root of x as x goes to infinity. If I look at what happens to both the numerator and denominator as x goes to infinity, we get infinity over infinity. So therefore, that's one of the indeterminate forms. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule says that I can take the limit as x goes to infinity of the numerator, or the derivative of the numerator, divided by the derivative of the denominator. Note, I'm not applying the quotient rule here. I'm simply taking the derivative of the numerator and dividing it by the derivative of the denominator. And recalling that the derivative of the natural log function is 1 over x, and x to the 1 fourth, we can apply the power rule, bring that power down in front. So I've got 1 fourth times x to the negative 3 fourths. Now when I look at that expression, it's hard to know where to go from there unless I simplify it. And I can simplify it by multiplying numerator and denominator by x. And simplifying that expression, I get 4 times the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over the fourth root of x. And knowing that the fourth root of x as x goes to infinity itself goes to infinity, this is going to give me a very small number. So this limit is equal to 0. So we've worked with what happens when we have a uh, limit equals 0 over 0, and we have to apply L'Hopital's rule multiple times. Here we've got an example of a limit, at, limit looking at infinity over infinity and taking that in determinate form. Let's consider another case yet. Let's look at the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of the cosecant of x minus 1 over x. Now, if I plug in 0 or values close to 0, cosecant of x is going to be 1 over the sine of x, and sine of x goes to 0, so 1 over the sine of x is going to get very, very large and positive. Minus 1 over x, again, as x goes to 0 from the right, that's 1 over x is going to be large and positive. So it looks like infinity minus infinity, and that is not necessarily 0. Okay. So how do we proceed with this, particularly when I, it doesn't look like the other forms of L'Hopital's rule, it does not look like a function divided by another function? Well, we can change this so that it is a function divided by a function. Namely, I can find a common denominator, which is x times the sine of x, and I can um, multiply each of 1 over sine of x minus 1 over x as by a form of 1. So I get the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of x minus the sine of x divided by x times the sine of x. And when I look at this limit again, this time I get 0 over 0 for values of x close to 0. So therefore, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So therefore, I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and look at that limit as x goes to 0 from the right. And the denominator involves a product. So I apply the product rule. And when I take a look at what happens to the numerator and denominator each as x goes to 0 from the right, I get 0 over 0. So again, I apply L'Hopital's rule again, and therefore I take the derivative of the numerator, I take the derivative of the denominator, again, I see that I've got a product in the denominator. So again, I have to apply the product rule. And I'm going to get the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of sine of x divided by the cosine of x plus the cosine of x minus x times the sine of x. And this time, when I look at values uh, of x close to 0, I get 0 divided by 2, which in this case is 0. No, so for this case, we see that um, the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of cosecant of x minus 1 over x, which initially looks like infinity minus infinity, does give us a limit of 0, but that's not always the case. Okay. 
And let's look at another example. This time, let's look at the limit as x goes to 0 of e to the x plus x all raised to the 1 over x power. And technically, we want to look at this limit as x goes to 0 from the right. Now, if I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to get something that looks like e to the 0 plus 0 raised to the 1 over 0. So that looks like it's going to be 1 plus 0 raised to the if x is approaching 0 from the right, then that's a very large power. So this is taking the indeterminate form of 1 to the infinity. So again, we can apply L'Hopital's rule, but it doesn't look like a quotient like we normally see with L'Hopital's rule. So the way that we proceed with this is that we're first going to take the expression e to the x plus x raised to the 1 over x power, and we're going to say let's let that equal y. And I'm going to use the natural logarithms and take the natural log of both sides. And I'm going to get the natural log of y equals the natural log of e to the x plus x raised to the 1 over x power. Great. Because now I can use my rules of logarithms to bring that 1 over x out in front. And I now have a quotient. So instead of taking the, natural, the limit as x goes to 0 of e to the x plus x raised to the 1 over x, I'm going to take the limit as x goes to 0 of the natural log of y, which is the limit as x goes to 0 of the natural log of e to the x plus x divided by x. Now let's first check to make sure that this meets one of the forms, one of the indeterminate forms. Well, when I plug in values of x that are greater than 0 but close to 0, I'm going to get the natural log of 1 divided by 0. 0 over 0 is one of the indeterminate forms. So applying L'Hopital's rule, I can take the derivative of the numerator, divide it by the derivative of the denominator, and evaluate that limit as x goes to 0. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over the function times the derivative of what's inside. So I've got 1 over e to the x plus x times the derivative of e to the x plus x. The derivative of x is 1, so that's in our denominator. Evaluating the derivative of what was inside the natural log of x, I get e to the x plus 1 divided by e to the x plus x all over 1. And I'm looking at the limit as x goes to 0. So now when I plug in 0 for x, I get a value of 2. But we're not done yet, because that's the limit as x goes to 0 of the natural log of the expression we want. So to undo that, I need to exponentiate. So I'm going to say that the limit as x goes to 0 of e to the x plus x raised to the 1 over x is actually e raised to the limit of the natural log of y as x goes to 0. So we have e squared. For our final example, we're going to consider the limit as theta goes to infinity of 3 theta plus the cosine of 3 theta divided by 2 theta minus 2 times the sine of 2 theta. Now, can we apply L'Hopital's rule in this case? Well, as theta goes to infinity, the numerator looks like, well, I've got a large number, 3 theta plus cosine of 3 theta, something that oscillates. So that's going to go to infinity. The denominator also goes to infinity as theta goes to infinity. So I've got infinity over infinity. So it looks like I can use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator, divided by the derivative of the denominator, and evaluate the limit as theta goes to infinity. So when I do that, I get the limit as theta goes to infinity of 3 minus 3 times the sine of 3 theta divided by 2 minus 4 times the cosine of 2 theta. Uh, but there's a bit of a problem because if I look at that numerator, 3 minus 3 times the sine of theta as theta goes to infinity does not exist. That limit does not exist because I'm oscillating around 3 and I never settle in on one number. And the same is true of the denominator. I oscillate around 2 and go above and below 2, but I never settle in around one number. So therefore, neither the limit of the numerator nor the denominator exist. And so this is one of those examples where the limit on the right side, the limit of the denominator, or the, the limit of the derivative of the numerator divided by the, the limit of the derivative of the numerator 
divided by the derivative of the denominator, that limit does not exist. So we, L'Hopital's rule does not help us in this situation. So therefore, we have to resort to other means to evaluate this limit. Fortunately, we can do that fairly readily. If I look at the limit as theta goes to infinity of 3 theta plus cosine of 3 theta divided by 2 theta minus 2 times the sine of 2 theta, that's the limit as theta goes to infinity. I can factor out a theta from both the numerator and denominator. That's going to cancel. And it's for large values of theta, the cosine of 3 theta, well, we know that that stays between positive and negative 1, divided by theta as theta goes to infinity, this will go to 0. So the numerator goes to 3. In the denominator, we can have a similar argument. 2 times the sine of 2 theta divided by theta is going to go to 0. So in the denominator, I'm left with 2. So the limit as theta goes to infinity of 3 theta plus cosine of 3 theta divided by 2 theta minus 2 sine of 2 theta equals 3 halves. So this is an example where we always have to check to make sure, can we even apply L'Hopital's rule? Does that limit on that right side, uh, after we've taken the derivatives of the numerator and denominator, does that limit exist? So.